Hello and welcome to yet another edition of The Focal Point. My name is Bart Kakoza. Now, African modern pop music is currently dominated by young musicians who basically sing along computer-generated soundtracks. In Uganda, there are very few groups that play real live music with conventional musical instruments. The oldest and probably the best jazz band is a Frigo band. It was formed in the 70s and has since dominated the Uganda music scene. Some of you have had the chance of visiting Club Obligato located along Port Bell Road Fridays and Saturdays nights know the taste of music the group plays. Now, one person, Moses Matovu, is a founder member and pioneer band leader to date. Matovu is not only a good leader that has managed to keep the band together for decades, but also an amazing saxophonist as well as a talented vocalist. He took time off his usual busy schedule to talk to me about the band, his music career, and his perception of the current music industry. Moses, thanks very much for joining us on this special edition of uh, our program. You are welcome, sir. Moses, your music spans decades. Give me a brief about how Africa started and how it eventually grew up to great fame that it has now. Uh, well, uh, the band, uh, the Africa band started uh, after the split of the Cranes band. We were in the Cranes band, myself, the late Charles Sechanzi, uh, Tony Senkeweje, Eddie Ganja, the late Jesse Kasiri, who, Sam Kauma. There is another one who played the lead, who used to play the lead guitar, Joseph Mungaya. So, so how, how did you, uh, your music career start? Yeah, I started uh, in 1967. I was, I was still a young man, around... Uh, 18 years. So what inspired you? Uh, actually, there were so many good musicians in this country who inspired me. For example, uh, the late Fred Masagazi, the late Fred Kanyike, Andrew Chambade, the late Nelson Sabavuma, Israel Magembe, the late Eklas Kawalia, and on the international scene we had the Beatles, Elvis Presley, uh, we had uh, Wilson Pickett, James Brown, to mention but a few. So here you were in the Crane Band, yeah. and the Crane Band breaks up. Yeah. So what happens when the Crane Band breaks up? You when when it uh, when it broke up, um, we, myself, Charles Echanzi, uh, Jeff Sewava, and others, we decided to continue with the music. So we decided to, uh, to form the Africa Band. The first day of our performance, uh, it was on the 1st of November, 1975. That's when the Africa Band started. But you had played in the Cranes, you had played in the Cranes and you had played for Idi Amin, did you? What was it like to play under Idi Amin or to play for Idi Amin, the man himself? At first, we, you know, we, we, play, we are playing on tension, but we managed because we, we actually, we went there in 1970, something like late 76, up to 1979, around May. That's when the war came. Why did you call it a frigo? What? Actually, I'm the, I'm the one who composed that name, a frigo. Uh, in short, Africa, then go musically. Ah, okay. So that's the meaning of the Afrigo band, I mean Afrigo. 
So what was the first song that you people played? Do you remember? Yeah, I remember. What was that song? That was a song by Charlie Sechan, the late Sechan. A okay. song called Buenkanya. Uh, can, can you... The one who composed that song. Yeah. That was our first Afrigo recording. Basically, for us, we play uh, uh, for people to dance. <laughs> There is a magnet in our music which can, you know, catch you and brings you to the to the flow. For us, we are playing live. Even recording, we could uh, record according to the formation of the band. If you are 10 people in the band, you have to record from the word go up to the end. At the time of the formation of the Afrigo, the music industry in Africa was dominated by the Congolese, and the Congolese were very good. Yeah, the, the Francos, Francos, the Veves, Negro Success, there were so, so many good How musicians. did you pl place yourself among those top guys who would come here and maybe outplay you? In Uganda here, we had so many good bands. You know, uh, we had uh, about five or four nightclubs here in Kampala. Uh, each nightclub had its own band. Uh, most of the musicians there, uh, we are mixed up with Ugandans and the foreigners like Congolese. Uh, some people who are who, good musicians who came from Mombasa, Kenya. So we, we could join together. But before we, 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 we started the music, we are inspired also uh, with uh, local artists and international musicians. saxophone is considered to be the most difficult, one of the most difficult instruments, I think, to blow mm -hmm. or to play. What does it take to play a saxophone? It depends upon to someone's interest yeah. and commitment. Because a guitar also, a guitar is not a simple instrument. Uh, a piano or a keyboard is not also, uh, you know, either thing. Even the drums, you see, even singing, but it's just of a matter of interest and commitment. Can I request you to play for us one of the best tunes that you think you play best? Yeah, let me try to play um, one of my own compositions. Yeah. This is a song called Sirina.
So I started blowing my, the saxophone in 1970. I was taught by the late Mansuru Akiki Bulegea. Did you, were you inspired by Veve because your style is actually Veve's style? Yeah, of course, Veve. Uh, I admired his well playing. There are so many uh, saxophonists. The late, um, this was uh, Yes M. Pomp. This man started in the Negro Six, eh? and then he went up to OK Jazz. He was a very good saxophonist. Even uh, Veve, I mean, uh, Kiamangana Mateta. His name is called Kiamangana Mateta. He used to, to blow a very good horn. Yeah. So those are the guys uh, who inspired us to learn. Do you remember the first uh, sax that, song, the sax that you played? And can you give us a kind of something? Okay, I can try it. This is a song. Just, just, just a small, very... This is, a, this is my song, actually. One of uh, the first ones. The first one, but yeah. then I was in the Cranes band. Yeah. The song is called Jimmy Sassi. I blew the, the tenor saxophone, but this is now soprano saxophone. This is a soprano saxophone. Yeah, B-flat uh, soprano saxophone. The song was in C major. C major here, I can play D. That was the horn which was in the, the, the song called Jimmy Sassira. Okay. Yeah. What do you consider to be a Frigo's greatest song so far? You know, uh, you know songs, we people who compose songs, it is like having children. They are all your children. So for me, I love each and every song of the Frigo band. But um, if I may say... Um, we have a song called uh, Afrigo Batuse Number Two, which was composed by Deo Mukung, who is now in London. He, that song, still up to today, if we don't play that song, they say you you, you haven't done anything mm -hmm. because you have not played the song. Afrigo yeah. There is another one, uh, speed control. There are so many intriguing songs that you've composed, like Amazigenyama and Speed. 
I believe they must be having a message behind, hidden behind. People have always wanted to find out. For me as a composer, I was just talking to any driver, reckless driver. Well, pe people believe it. you are saying about AIDS. Ah, no. You can use it as AIDS, but for me, I made the, the speed of driving. Okay. Then Second, there is Amazigenyama. Amazigenyama, it is uh, an adaptation, uh, uh, a song called Amazigenyama. These are the folk songs of okay. Uganda, okay. especially here in Uganda. The, the music industry, like any other industries, yeah. have been evaded by the computerization. Yeah. You have people singing behind the tracks, you, and they, mm. they never play music to me. Do you at one time think that at one time in the future we are going to have no musicians playing mus musical instruments? I don't think so, because, uh, you know, these things now, people are disgusted with the, that type of music. You know, one, one hit wonder, you know, somebody might, call, I mean, sing a song and hits, but just one song cannot do. You compose a song, you know that is a challenge to yourself. So uh, I, don't, I don't think that uh, music is going to die because people now have reversed to, to, to what used to be the right channel, I mean, the right track. But so why to, haven't you adopted that method of getting tracks and also singing along that tracks is like that? temporarily, others? you know. A professional musician can, cannot do that, mm. you see. For me, I, I really, I feel ashamed to play on, you know, on the, the track. This uh, method of bringing t this uh, modern technology is to help you to simplify the work. You keep on getting new musicians, new young upcoming musicians to join you. Are you scared of them adulterating your music? No, for us we don't, uh, we, we don't mind about uh, bringing in other ideas. So long as the ideas are shooting with our, you know, our group. But if your ideas are not good, you know, they don't shoot, we don't allow it. But we always welcome new ideas. We've lost uh, most of our, you know, pillars, yeah. most of our, you know, strong musicians in the band. Uh, the recent one. The recent was one is Charles Sechans. What was he basically talented in? He was a great composer, a great vocalist. We'll never get that, uh, his voice again. When we are singing together, you know, we, we had personal singing. <laughs> So the, the guy was great. Charles Sechans was great. Godfrey Mwambala. Who was Mwambala and what, was, what had he brought into the band? He, he the one who composed Jim. Jim yeah, that's right. He composed in Dembe. These songs we, we are composed by Godfrey Mambala, but they, they were sung by Joanita, our singer, okay. Joanita Kawalia Muganga. So even playing, he brought in another, you know, rhythm because he was playing keyboard. We could not, you know, feel anything like missing a, a rhythm guitar when Mambala was on the stage. Mansur Akiki, yeah. Bulegea. An amazing saxophonist. Yeah, he was. He's the one who taught me how to blow the first note on this saxophone. <laughs>
our lead guitarist, Paulo Serumaga, he used to play the lead guitar or the solo guitar. He died in 1989. Rashid Musoke, our drummer, he died in 1992. Tony Sengo, um, Fred Chigozi died. So we've lost uh, most of our, you know, pillars. We, we, we will not replace them. As death robs you of your people, yeah. it, you also get threatened? Of course, why not? Because if, as we are sitting together, you know, and I passed, I mean, I died tomorrow, you also get scared and say, hey, the guy was here, you know. So any time I, I, I might also follow my friends, you see, there's no way I can escape that. But it's God's plan. In spite of the death robbing you of those people, the band still grows strong. Yeah, it, it has to, because... Yeah. Uh, the institution is there and the, the, the method, the methods are there, you know, so we have to keep on. In mm. Uganda, so many bands have come out and so many bands have gone, they have died, mm. but Afrigo has died. What is the secret that keeps Afrigo alive? It is just a matter of discipline, so that the key. Secondly, we have, we, we practice. There's no way you can, you know, bypass the uh, practice. You have to practice. time you come you people come on the stage and start singing mm. people just get well what's the magic behind the captivation of those people actually those are our fans you know we, we we've gone we've, we've been with them for quite a long time When I blow this, then people then say, also, hey! Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. When I blow it like this. Hey! Hey, so they like it so much. As you go on your music career, have you found any surprises? What I've found out, I'm sorry, but it's true. So, <laughs> this generation is behind, you know. They know nothing about music. The guys who know nothing are the kings. Those who know nothing, so we all get surprised. You see, people who know nothing, they are the great. They are the greatest. <laughs> but the, those who know, they are rubbish. They are nothing. <laughs> Today, like we said, technology, <laughs> wake up to, today and say, you can sing around the track and then you have Yeah, the music. but you know, that is nothing. Yeah. You see, you cannot... You cannot think that by playing with a computer you are great. Mm. No, for those who know this, ah, this is our place. Yeah, okay. You see, this type of, I don't know, you know, kakum, kakum, 
Africa, every so <laughs> it's the same, the same thing. Same thing. <laughs> you see, that's why I, I, I appeal to upcoming musicians to learn instruments. It is very important. Today, a, 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 a so-called musician can come in the studio. He has a song, but he, all, he has only two lines. You see? But what he says, he, he would like you to, you see, what I want, you to, you play me, like, play this <laughs> song, like, Rake Dubez, this, don't you know this Rake number? That's what I want. That type of, you know, uh, no, it's not good. Yeah. You see, you have to be creative. Yeah. Now you want to, to leave everything to the producer. That's why you see songs here, uh, most like, uh, almost they are, they are sounding the same mm -hmm. because they, the musicians here don't take time to sit down. Yeah. Secondly, it is a surprise. Uh, somebody, a musician can say, uh, we, we are in March now. Now he might say, by June, I have to launch. I'm going to launch my album. He has the deadline there, but he has nothing. You see? Don't that, you have deadlines yourselves? No, I cannot make a deadline. What I do, for me, I compose my song on my time, you know? My, you know? I don't rush. I don't say that by June, I'm going to release a, 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 an album when it is not there, when it is not ready, you know, you take your time. Secondly, you cannot compose three albums in a year. You see, that is impossible. What would you wish to see in the music industry in this country in the next maybe 10, five years from now? I would like to, the audience, all the fans, okay, they are appreciative what, for what we are doing. But I, I want also them to, to learn about music. For example, in South Africa, those people there are no music. If you go to Congo, Congo Kinshasa, Congo Brazzaville, you cannot, you cannot go away deceiving people. You see, people in Kenya, Tanzania. But for us, sincerely speaking, in Uganda, we are behind. On the side of the listeners or the fans, yeah, people should not take it for granted that Bart has composed it, so oh, it is great. You sit down and uh, analyze the song. Yeah, and uh, this cheap popularity is not also not good, yeah. especially on TVs, FM radio stations. You see, this, uh, the way they blow their trumpet is not correct. Yeah. And because they, they deceive the owners of the song that they are great, you see, things have, have got to take time, yeah. you see. So that's my appeal to, to, the, to, to the music, you know, fans, yeah. the mu music lovers. Well, that's all we had time for from our Focal Point program here at Media Plus. Make sure to tune in next time for yet another exciting edition of the, of the Focal Point. My name is Bart Kakoza saying see you then. <laughs>